You guys want more or less? I'll tell you what is in the uh, presentation. And all the code that I have is what you have. So um, let me go through the rest of it, what we were going to cover. Uh, here's the SSL stuff. Um, bang, bang, nothing unusual here, right? We have the key exchange where we send, we got to send the, uh, uh, the big three, right? The cipher, the key algorithm, and, you know, the third one, whatever it is. Um, we negotiate them, you know, uh, server says, hey, I can do AES or I can do Blowfish. Client says, I can only do RC4, right? So the whole negotiation, the whole handshaking thing goes on. Um, then this is what I'm talking about. We wrap, we wrap the session. This is our, our old beloved, you know, TCP message that we were sending back and forth, right? But it's wrapped in an SSL wrapper. Right? And I can show you that. Take a look at this when you get a minute. Uh, my computer ever comes back. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What's a good one to show you? Oh, it's in the SSL. Wrong one. Let's do SSL. Here's our certificates. And I have uh, both the key and the cert on both of them. So it's sitting at, with instructions. So in the SSL directory, there's a text file that, that shows you how to run OpenSSL to generate your own, your own stuff. But um, so let me, do, let me do the client. I'll show you what I'm talking about in terms of the, uh... OK, so here's where we, here's where we, yeah, this is old hat. You guys have seen this. We spin up the object. Hey, guess what we're doing here? Here's our tunnel. This is our tunnel, right? We're doing SSL uh, wrap socket. And we're saying, wrap this uh, object. Here's, here's the object I want you to wrap. And oh, by the way, you know, here's the certificate I need you to validate. And oh, by the way, it's not optional. You, you have to give me, I, I require a certificate validation, right? Um, and we do the exact same thing we were doing with the, the client, right? Only we're doing it through the SSL socket, the tunnel. Everybody see that? So, I mean, and look how many statements to do that. There's really nothing. Yes. Sorry? Uh, can you use this, the exact same names that you use for the client? That, where we set up that tunnel. Yeah. When I, when I define C, uh, can I uh, redefine it with SSL in it? So I don't have to rewrite my complete program? So um, what's going to happen is, and that's a great question, actually. And if I, if I understand your question correctly, what's going to happen is, remember what we do here. We fill out this form, and we spin up an object. And now we're going to glue that object into the tunnel. It's like you know, a GRE tunnel, right? You, you've got, uh, or you know, whatever, whatever, whatever the tunnel endpoint is you're, that floats your boat. I mean, it's the same thing. We're taking this object and we are mapping it into this, this tunnel entry point. So we can't, uh, like, reuse that same object, right? We'd have to spin up another object. So I'd have to have a, you know, A or a B or, you know, something else. And I could not have it conflict with the same ports that I'm using, right? So I pretty, you, you're pretty much locked into that tunnel. Unless what you can do is 
you can, you can build your own, and this is where it gets crazy, but it, it, it happens. And it happens because web browsers work and servers work this way. You can multiplex over a single connection. So I can spin up an object and then have, it's just like we do in, in the uh, networking world, right? We've got, um, you know, God forbid, uh, a VMware NSX server, right? Uh, terminating its layer two environment right at a, a layer three tunnel. And that layer two stream isn't just one ethernet adapter, it's a zillion of them. It's being essentially multiplexed. So if I'm really good, if you're a really good programmer, you can you build, build the one object and then you know, take all the users or whatever you're doing, files, whatever, and multiplex them into that. So that becomes a very busy object. Does that answer your question or more confused? <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, like you can, um, you could build uh, sets of queues that are just lists of sockets that you just spin through and you map them into this. You, you basically, it's the same thing as kind of multiplexing it. You have a list of, of objects that are mapped to a port, you know, but you, you can't like, once you, What's that? I'm a lazy programmer. I don't want to rewrite my complete code to implement SSL. So in the basics, I define C right. without SSL. Then now I'm going to name C B. And instead of using SSL underscore SOC, I'm going to use C. Do, uh, does the module the SSL wrapper module contain the same object functions as the normal socket connection? Uh, no. Uh, uh, cipher functions and so on. There are cipher functions and so on that are not available in the regular okay, library. So they will, it's something I didn't use already in my code. Yeah, because they are not available in the regular so right. socket library. I'm go, I'm, I want to reuse my, the same code I already wrote, but then implement SSL in it without having to rewrite the complete code to support SSL. Yeah, I mean, you, you can do that, but uh, it's, it's kind of like, um, like I can't, the way that I, I'm mapping, you know, the physical infrastructure back into my software is through these objects, these things, right? So. Um, like I am, this object is going to take care of a TCP um, stream, right? Um, this object is going to have, you know, a peer, some kind of peer at the remote end, right? There's going to be a, you know, a C on the far side, right? So you can like do things that, uh, you know, would allow you to essentially do that, but it's, it's a, and I hate to keep using the same word, because it's not answering your question, but it's, it's kind of like multiplexing it. You, you establish a connection, and then you just send a bunch of different things, and it becomes just a big... Yeah, sure. Especially over beer. <laughs> so uh, let me just run through the presentation. I'll, I'll let everybody go. And it's not like I have the right to keep you here, but... Um, so, uh, okay, this is the other thing we were going to, seriously, take a look at this. This was actually going to be the cool thing, um, XML RPC. Take a look at this. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it, there's, a, there's a couple programs out there that allow you to create a spreadsheet, uh, you know, retrieve a spreadsheet information from a spreadsheet. You, you will absolutely get it when you take a look at that code. But the reason we were doing it was um, these guys. What you do is, let me see if I can just show you real quick. Pretty cool. Um, where am I? Let 
E-A-G, R-A-N-T. All right, let's shut down Hamlet. No more, no more Shakespeare. Um, what are we looking for? We're looking for XML RPC. Let me just shut down a couple of these. Running out of. I'll open the first one just to walk you through it. And then the, uh, the second one is the one that's really cool. XML RPC. Here's the first one. There's a client. Come on. And let me open the server. Uh, XML RPC server. All right. So first we'll talk about the client. So with XML RPC, again, this is the same mechanism uh, ACI and, and a zillion controllers use, right? Because they're, you know, the whole independent, go off, do your own thing kind of thing. What you do on the client side is um, we're going to enter an HTTP. Actually, this XML RPC, it runs on a server that comes with Python. The server is called Simple HTTP Server. And you can, you can literally, from the command line, spin it up. All you have to say is Python simple HTTP server. Uh, and if you've got a, 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 it'll come up. You attach to it through your browser, uh, port 8000. Uh, and any files that are in that directory, it will show you those files. You click, you can open them. Or if you have an HTML, an index file in that directory, it'll serve that as well. But what they did was they went one step further. They took that simple HTTP server and they built an XML RPC server over the top of it. And that's what this is. And what we're doing is we're, you know, what's your server's uh, address? You know, what's the port number? I'm going to set up this HTTP connection using the host and the port I just entered. And then I'm going to do something called XML RPC server proxy. And I'm going to go ask the server to give me a directory of what's out there. So let's, let's just run that real quick. And then I'll show you where the spreadsheets come in. Um, let me see if I can do it this way. Uh, XML RPC. This is our last of the evening, so I guarantee this will blow up. All right, so here's our server. And what we're going to do is whatever the function that we want to do, whatever we want to do, we register that function. We, we've been talking about functions now for a while, right? So we're going to define a function called list contents. And it's going to do whatever it has to do, whatever you're going to do with a function, right? And it's going to return whatever. But the one thing different, slightly different, about XML RPC is if I register that function with the server, the XML RPC server, when a remote device calls me, it will execute anything in here. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, XML RPC, where am I? I'm on the server. So am I on the work? Server's address, 192.168.56.1, right? And what, what port do you guys want? <laughs> what port do you want? Let's do uh, 46,000. 46, All right. So now it's, yes. Uh, Uh, what am I looking at? What? Let me shut this down. Server XML, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm going to be the server, right? Let me do this. Uh, 192.168.56.1, and I'm going to be 56.1 because uh, my, my Windows machine is going to be the server on this one. 
Good catch. That was a good catch. Um, what port number? Um, let's say 52,000. All right, so let's go to the client in the VM. Go to the client. Am I sitting on the client? Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh, 192.168.56.1, correct? And the port was 52,000. And... Gotta turn the firewall off. Okay, let's, um, I don't know if it's going to hang that port now. It's probably what happened on the last one. Uh, let's try it. 192.168.56. Uh, what's our server's address? Server 1. And it was, I think it's going to hang this port. Okay, so it didn't hang the port. We lucked out. So the client goes out and says, contacts the server. Server has registered that function. It's just a simple function. And he sends back, the client asked the server, that function on the server was to, to list the directory. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, on this uh, machine, we're looking at his directory. Everybody see that? Now let's see if we can scale this up. Like, mega scale this up. Uh, shut this down, and I promise you can all leave after this. Um, what am I doing? Let's do the let's do the uh, server on this side. What were we? We're, we just did two, right? Let's do the server on this side. Okay. Here, what we're going to do is nothing different, nothing fancy, only we're going to do spreadsheets. We're going to say, we're going to create a function that creates a spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, it's going to have, a, you know, I picked, you know, column width of 30 in cell A, you know, hello world, all that kind of nonsense. And it's going to be a function. And at the end of that function, what we're going to do is, the very end, we're going to register it. We're going to, we have a create spreadsheet and a uh, retrieve spreadsheet. And here, we're kind of, here we're registering, we register the, the different, blah, 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 the, the functions. You can see the server register function. So let's run this. Keep our fingers crossed. 192.168.56.101. And on, I don't know, 33,000? 33, 33, All right. Now the uh, client two. And then we'll call it a day. I'll run. 192.168.56.101.33,000. Okay, so now, what well, we're, we, um, uh, that spreadsheet is super sensitive. Nobody can touch it. Anybody that, the only one that can touch it is a server. It's got to live there. So what we're doing here is on the client, we're saying, hey, I need a spreadsheet. I need you to create a spreadsheet. And uh, so I'm going to enter C to create one. And I, I'm going to enter R to uh, retrieve one. And an S for a, a function I call surprise. So there's three functions built in that server. OK? So let's do, uh, let's create. And let's see what we got. Uh, what directory were we in? Let's go to. Uh, Go to B. 
the directory where XML RPC is. Oh, there it is. So we created one. Let's just verify that we weren't lying here. Uh, so it's got hello world, one, two, three, four, five, last entry. Now let's retrieve it. Let's get the client to retrieve this information. Shut that down. Bring that server so you guys can see it. And we got a lot of these. All right, so let's, um, let's retrieve. There you go. He went to the server, went to the retrieve function that retrieves data from the spreadsheet, and there you go. Came, returned back. Instead of having the, the spreadsheet sitting on your, the local machine, it's protected on the remote machine. Now, we can take this to all kinds of, of uh, cool permutations, right? We can run you know, this over a secure connection. We can do encryption on the stream. We can do hashes on the spreadsheets. We can lock the spreadsheets. Make sense? Uh, and then let's do one last, one last, uh, and I'll let you go. Let's do the surprise. Come on. Yeah, this, this machine is buried. It'll come up. Come on. <laughs> so while we're waiting, any, what do you guys think? Any questions? Any, is this helpful, hurtful? Yeah, that's weird. That I'm blaming on YouTube, okay? That's an official protest. That was not my demo going bad. That was YouTube. So what did you guys think? Uh, more confused than when you came in? Less confused? About the same? Um, again, I, there's a, um, they have this spark room that they said they're setting up for two weeks for anybody who attended this session. Uh, I'm going to own them. There, there's three of them, but, you know, there will be for these. I consider this one session. So uh, if you have questions, please go out and try it, man. I mean, bring down the VM. If you can't do that, you know, fire up the code. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You, you guys will really, really love it. Um, and if, if um, I'm going to be in India, like, and then Australia. So um, if, if I don't get back to you, uh, that blog on the Cisco blogs, um, I'm out there. I'm, I'm I get messages that people have actually looked at uh, the blog, which would be a nice relief. <laughs> I did three of them. Nobody said anything. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry? Where the... Oh, 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 yeah. It's on the, um, it's on the uh, Cisco blob, blog page. Yeah, there's, there's like a, um, a drop down for authors. Uh, just look up Vince Kelly, and you should get the massive, all three blogs. <laughs> uh, but it points you back. It's, it's worth doing, because it points you back to the, the repository. And... Uh, you know, thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. Hope it was helpful.